Hello everyone, and thanks for joining us today for the New Blue FX Tyler Pro and Avid Media Composer 7 webinar. My name is Adam Dolan, Marketing Manager here at New Blue FX, and I'll be your moderator today. During the presentation, if you have any questions, we'll be taking a few minutes after each section of the presentation to answer those. Uh, if you have any questions <coughs> related to Avid or Avid Media Composer 7, Lauren Berry and Kate Ketchum from Avid will be joining us at the end of the presentation to help answer those questions. With that said, I'll pass it over to our presenter and VP of Products, Travis White. Hello there, I'm uh, Travis White and welcome to New Blue Titler Pro, the total titling solution in Avid Media Composer 7. And uh, first off, uh, thank you, Adam, uh, for doing this. And again, I'm Travis White, VP of Product Development here at New Blue. So uh, first off, uh, we want to talk a little bit about who is New Blue. Uh, New Blue is uh, a developer of plugin effects and tools uh, for your media composer or whatever NLE that you happen to uh, be on. And uh, we approach it very uniquely. Um, we see that the main thing that you really need out of what we build is to save you time and money. Essentially, how we approach our products is that we respect your billable hours. And so what that means is when we design an effect, uh, we dial it into the acute controls that are going to make the difference for you, and we think about the workflow, and we think about the time taken to get to the end result that you're looking for and move on. And we've taken that philosophy of everything that we do, and we brought it into a titling solution, New Blue Titler Pro. And so what you're going to see in the next couple moments is uh, a very different approach of doing titles. Not just titles, but motion graphic titles, and a 2D and 3D extrusion, and really the modeling and, and motion graphics work, but in an interface and an experience that's very fast to operate with and very efficient with your time. And uh, that's one of the wonderful things that we know Avid has that same perspective for its customers, that uh, they're looking to make you efficient, to make you fast, to get through a lot of work. And uh, so this partnership uh, that we've been able to develop here has been very wonderful because we're definitely seeing the same thing and wanting to help you guys uh, get through your work in an efficient manner while delivering a quality product. So uh, to that end, I'd like to uh, go on to our next slide here, and we will show you what it is like, uh, or what we'll cover, I should say, in, the, in, these, uh, in this next hour. So first off, we're going to look at the Titler Pro interface. What are the different components of the interface? How do you find things? And how do you wrap your head around this workflow? The next thing we're going to go into is some of the basic text tools. So uh, you, uh, many of you, I know, work uh, with the Avid Title tool. And uh, you're going to be able to see some uh, com comparisons and some correlations between what you do today and what you're able to do with Titler Pro. Uh, find, uh, after that, we're going to go into uh, uh, developing a lower third from scratch. So instead of starting with templates, we're going to start from scratch. So you really see from applying to the timeline on how you build a lookup and how you build uh, text up and then ultimately how you uh, share that uh, with others or get it into other places in your timeline. Incorporated into that lower third uh, project that we're going to do is going to be animation and transitions and effects, actually. So uh, you're going to get the whole kit and caboodle all in one little project from scratch, and that'll be a great thing. Uh, finally, uh, we'll look at multiple instances in your timeline and how to collaborate. Uh, rough, rough edit versus finish edit. Uh, you know, sharing work with someone else or simply for your own developing styles and looks that you can use time and time again in your work. So uh, at, at this point, let's just go into Titler Pro and uh, see what the interface is like and, and see a bit of that uh, layout. Let me close up this uh, slide. Here you have New Blue Titler Pro inside Avid Media Composer 7. The first thing you want to look at is the workspace. Now, there's this green bounding around uh, what we call a paragraph. This is a text string. It may have carriage returns in it. It might not but it's a whole uh, collection of text characters uh, that is in one container in which you would put transitions and effects on that container. Uh, this, in this particular composition, we actually have two different paragraphs. We have the one that's called In Avid Media Composer and the one above it that says Titler Pro. So if I go down to the bottom of the interface, you'll notice that we have a timeline. So yes, this is an effect has been applied to a clip in your Media Composer timeline, but it itself has a timeline within it. You'll notice the duration is five seconds right now, and we have two paragraphs and a shape in this case, but uh, we'll look at these two paragraphs. So just to give a quick survey of what's possible, 
in this Titler Pro, you see this very organic blur glow kind of look that's been developed. Well, that's been developed in Titler Pro with using effects. So we have this turn effect, we have a, something called Dream Glow, Film Pro, Motion Blur, Sheer Energy. And in fact, here on Sheer Energy, you can see that it is keyframed. So you can keyframe effects, you can keyframe uh, uh, paragraphs uh, within Titler Pro. On the top portion, you have your basic text tools, your font, your font point, bold italicized underline, and all those kind of things, as well as kerning and letting. Uh, on the left-hand side, you have an attributes panel, for which has four different sections. One, you have the object tab. This is the position, rotation, scaling uh, of your particular paragraph. So it's, it's orientation, position, and space is really what you're working with right here. Uh, if you have special shapes, such as uh, uh, rectangles, which we'll deal with later, uh, then some additional controls about roundness and things of that nature would be found here. Under style, this is where you're developing the look of your text. Now, this particular example, Tyler Pro, I've done with a lot of effects, and the style itself is just one layer. It's one layer with an image applied to it. You can develop a style with multiple style layers, multiple outlines, multiple drop shadows, and that's how that is developed right here. You go into 2D or 3D and start adding more. Effects? Well, right now we're on this particular paragraph. So on this paragraph, there are five effects applied. Now you can order the chain of effects, open up any one of these effects and modify its parameters, keyframe that effect. Uh, we'll jump to transitions. On this particular paragraph, if we size this up a bit, we have four transitions. <laughs> we have two coming in and two going out. You know, like, that's kind of a unique concept. Well, the, the, the reality is that we have animation transitions and more raster-based transitions from the greater library of New Blue Effects that can complement each other and create a very unique look. So you can put multiple transitions on, uh, and on the, you know, coming in or going out. So that's a bit of a survey of what the uh, interface is like and how to get around it. And you'll see how this operates as we move forward. Um, Let's go ahead and show you how to apply Titler Pro to the Avid Media Composer timeline. So the first thing we want to do is uh, scrub in our timeline to a place that we want to apply uh, a title instance, and we will go to the effect palette. Titler Pro is found in the effect palette. I know uh, many of you are familiar with the you know, Avid Title tool having its own way of applying that in, but this is an effect. So you go to Titler Pro, drag that down, to your timeline. Now notice I dragged it to a sliced track on the timeline above my media assets. You can do that or you can drag it directly on your media in your timeline as well, however you'd like to do that. And we have this enter text that came up as the default text. How do we edit that? Well, like any effect, we would open up the effect editor. And once we're in the effect editor, uh, we have one control in the effect editor and that's called launch user interface because titling really does require its own unique interface to get things working. So uh, up pops Titler Pro and you can begin working from this point. This is probably a good uh, moment to stop and see if there's any questions that have come through. Thanks Travis. Yes we do have a few questions. Uh, first off, <clears throat> is Titler Pro available in other Media Composer versions beyond um, Media Composer 7? Yes, uh, so uh, Media Composer 7 comes with Titler Pro. So all of you guys that have uh, version 7, you already have this tool. Get to your effects palette and work with it. Uh, but however, if you don't have 7 yet, uh, but you are a user of another version of Avid Media Composer, Titler Pro works with all those versions. So you're on 5, you're on 5.5, 5, you're on 6. Uh, Titler Pro works great in those applications. As well, I mean, if you're, you're also maybe you have a history of being on other NLEs and you're looking at Avid and say, hey, do I want to go there? Um, and you're trying to figure out where you want to go, well, Titler Pro works on all the major NLEs. So you can jump into a Titler Pro workflow, and uh, you know, regardless of uh, you know, what your future holds, you, you know that you can uh, you come into Avid or, and, and um, still maintain those workflows. So that's a really great thing there. Thanks, Travis. <clears throat> Another question uh, we had a couple folks asking were, uh, how do you open New Glue Titler Pro tool, and where can they find it within uh, the Avid? Well, uh, once again, uh, if we just close this down, we can find it in the effects palette. And that's the main thing. You go into the effects palette, drag it down to your timeline, and then go into the effect editor and click the one button, launch user interface, and that's how you get it down into your Avid Media Composer timeline. 
Great. Uh, looks like that's it for questions now. And, and, and for those of who are just uh, joining the, 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 the meeting here, uh, we'll be taking your questions after each break in the presentation. Uh, you can ask your questions anytime during the presentation using the question feature in your GoToWebinar dashboard. Uh, if you have any questions regarding Avid or Avid Media Composer 7, we'll be answering those questions um, with the help of Lauren and Kate at the end of the presentation. Um, and to get things moving along, we'll, we'll jump to the next section, which is uh, basic text tools. All right, here we go. So the first thing we want to do, instead of looking at entered text, uh, let's uh, do something a little different here. So I'm going to select it all and type in first, last. And uh, so we'll type in first, last here. And uh, the first thing that, to notice is that you have this green bounding, and this is the paragraph, and we talked about that. Uh, you can go into your fonts here, drop down and pick a font, uh, like a Zolanum. I'm not even sure how to pronounce this, uh, but uh, you'll get that font working right there. And let's size this up a little bit more so you guys can see this. Um, if you do a sub-selection, such as the word last, notice you get a blue bounding. And this blue bounding box allows you to do unique edits on those characters. So, for example, I might want to go up to the bold tool and bold that up. Uh, I might want to, uh, you know, change justification or kerning or letting. So let's uh, let's increase the kerning here. Or there you go, and let's increase the kerning, and you'll see every character that has been in the selection zone is receiving that new kerning value. Now, if you don't want that to happen, let's say just la or the L in the word last. I just want to tighten that up a bit. I can do that, or hey, let's let's go to the, the F in, in first, and now uh, either increase or decrease that particular kerning right there. So you have the ability, uh, letter by letter, to work with that kerning to really dial up some very unique looks. In addition, not only just kerning, but you can actually size and position individual characters however you'd like them to be. In fact, we have this uh, big F right here and start actually doing a little bit of typography or um, you know graphic design with your characters that you're working with and not only uh, can you do that in the X and Y position but if you click this little uh, tool which is our XYZ handle tool you can actually rotate it in 3D space and that's at, at an individual character level but if we take this back and uh, just get back to where we were and don't have any particular characters selected, we have the green bond bounding on the outside, and that is the whole paragraph, and you can do you know, or an orientation in 3D space uh, and you know, those kinds of things. So uh, uh, lastly is like how do you colorize a particular piece of text? Well, we can go into the attributes, style, and right now this style already has a style layer applied. It happens to be white. Uh, let's go ahead and pick a gradient. Let's put a gradient on this. So let's do a white here and we will dial this down and bring in a little bit more gray and put the positions of the gradient right there and now you can see uh, what this looks like with the gradient on it. Now I can't see this text very well so let's go ahead and apply another style layer and so we're going to go into our 2D style layers and bring in a shadow size that up a little bit, turn that around, and now you can see some of the basic elements how to manipulate text uh, inside uh, New Blue Titler Pro. As far as letting is concerned, the same kind of uh, idea. If you type in another uh, line such as uh, title of position, and let me size this whole thing down so you guys can see. If I do a selection up here and I choose to increase or decrease my letting. I'm doing that on one particular word, which is the last, the word last. Or if I do a subselection of the whole line, then I'm doing additional kerning and letting on that line. So those are some of the basic uh, text tools within New Blue Title or Pro. You see it's very straightforward, very convenient, right in the workspace to get all that work done. You have multiple paragraphs, and you can do uh, different styles on individual characters to your heart's content. Any questions so far? Yes, we do have a few questions. And we have a question regarding real time. So is, is Titler, folks want to know if it's Titler rendering in real time, 
Um, I guess it's not coming through that way through the connection speed, but uh, just in, in terms of you know when they're editing in Avid. Yes, uh, Titler Pro is a real-time application. Um, yes, all of you don't have the benefit of seeing what I'm seeing uh, just because of the nature of a webinar. Uh, but uh, what, what happens is New Blue Titler Pro is GPU accelerated. So it really does rely on your graphics card within your system. So NVIDIA, uh, uh, ATI, the latest cards are available. Um, I, and so any card that really Avid is approving uh, is, is great for this application as well. And uh, so it's real-time playback right here in the new blue uh, interface. And then once you get it on your timeline, then it's, it's a bit of a factor of you know, what is your graphics card, how high of a resolution you're, you're running, and um, you may or may not have to render the results uh, in, your, in your Avid Media Composer timeline when you're ready to render effect, and you all know what that means. Great. Also, folks were wondering, um, can they incorporate uh, logos and images, uh, things that they maybe created from Photoshop and PNGs and stuff like that, into their title? Yes, definitely. Uh, you can bring in uh, uh, basically JPEG and PNG raster assets. And actually, in this next section, I'm going to deal directly with that, and you'll see how that works. Great. And lastly, um, people want to know if they'll be able to show us how to use uh, templates for repetitive headshots and different uh, lower thirds, if we'll be getting to that later in the presentation. Uh, definitely. We will definitely cover that. In fact, our next section right here is uh, cr uh, creating a lower third from scratch. And once we do that, then we'll walk through what it's like to save those templates off and be able to use that in the rest of your presentation. Great. Well, without, a, without further ado, let's jump to that section, creating lower thirds from scratch. All right. So let's just continue with this first last that we've started to develop. And uh, let's just put, I'll go back to my object, and I will, on my scale, just lock that, put a 1 in there to get us back to our original scale. And what I want to do here is use my point fonts to really change the size. Let's change it to 8. And just get it down here in the workspace. And I can right click and copy and then select somewhere else on the, on the workspace and click paste. And what that does is now makes two copies of uh, our paragraphs. So now we have two paragraphs on the timeline. Notice the second instance applied right where I had my cursor on the timeline. Uh, so uh, that you can position your cursor exactly where you want and that paste is going to work that way. So uh, let's go ahead and type a new uh, text string in here. title of position and we will put this in place now the first last I want to be a little larger than title of position well, I'm just going to simply use my resize handle to get that sized up a bit so now I have first last and title of position in my title safe area uh, just to know under view we also have safe margins for 4x3 uh, development within 16x9 projects for those of you who need to put out your show in different formats uh, I'm going to extend both of these paragraphs to the full length of our total title sequence, which is 10 seconds. And I want to make sure title of position is uh, below the first, uh, first name. So we want to have this text now on some kind of background, because it's really not popping all that well. So let's bring in another element. I'm going to add in a shape. Let's bring in a rectangle. Now, if you went to the library, just a note, under shapes, you have a number of uh, shapes and circles and rectangles and a whole bunch of styles that you could bring in that you can start with. But we're going to start from scratch just so you really know how to operate with this. So we're going to size this up a bit, go back to our attributes panel. I'm going to reduce the radius corners. And let's get a, a color on this, shall we? So let's do a color pick, pick some color out there, maybe modify that color just a little. And there we go. There we have a nice uh, color to work with. And we're going to bring this down to where we would want it to be. Now, notice it's starting to cover our text. That's because uh, Titler Pro has a concept of tracks and track ordering. So this shape, I simply want to drag in my timeline to the bottom of the timeline. And now I've reordered those layers. So to make this a little bit more interesting, uh, let's go ahead and extend this size of this uh, bar, in fact, let me size it down just a little bit more, to the full length 
of our, our, our presentation here. And instead of doing just a solid color, let's bring in a gradient. So what I'm going to do in the bottom right corner, instead of doing a different color, I'm sim simply going to dial in uh, opacity or an alpha channel. And I'm going to do alpha channel of zero. And so now you have this nice organic move uh, or uh, going from solid to alpha. Now that's looking pretty good, but we can style this up even more. In fact, let's go into the style layers. I'm going to do a 3D style layer and bring in an outline. And I'm going to thicken that up a bit. Use my color picker. Simply pick a color. And so we have a nice, uh, thick, uh, strong line right there. And we can go into 3D and pick another outline and bring that in. Let's, let's uh, thicken this one up and pick some kind of white out of the scene. So now if I click off of this paragraph, you'll see that we have this very nice lower third rectangle with a nice gradient within it and a couple outlines uh, very quickly. Um, now if we want this to animate in any kind of way or have some kind of life or move about it, uh, we've only been doing still stuff so far, I can go into the library, go into my effects area. There's two effect areas that come default with Titler Pro. That's animations and starter pack. But something I know is very useful is... Um, uh, one of the other uh, effects called motion effects it has this great uh, effect called rolling waves and I know that the effect um, where is that moving shadow is a very cool effect you click drag and drop and now you have moving shadow I'm gonna dial this up so you guys can really see it so uh, the shading the speed there's a speed there and maybe some uh, amplitude so I could uh, warp this uh, character if I need to, but I don't want to warp this particular uh, particular border here. So I'm going I'm to take that amplitude down to zero, and I am going to change the direction just so I have a nice, subtle swell running by. Now, uh, unfortunately, we can't really see what... Uh, what the animation looks like frame by frame over this presentation, but you guys get the picture. I'll jump around a little bit and you'll see that moving. Uh, next, what we want to do is really polish this off. Is we want to get to one of those earlier questions, which was how do you bring in outside assets? So I'll go File, Import Image, and we'll go to the desktop and bring in a PNG that has alpha in it. Put that down in the corner, and that's looking pretty good. But also, I might want to style this up a little bit more. Well, there's another effect uh, within uh, New Blue's collection of products. Video Essentials 4 has this great drop shadow effect that understands and respects the alpha in an image. And if I can just drag and drop that particular effect, you'll see that it's on this particular shape. The opacity is a little thick. I'm going to dial that down a little bit so I have a nice, subtle uh, drop shadow. And I think we're done with our uh, composition here. Now is really the idea of animating. So let's just look in the, in the timeline and see what we have. We have four different paragraphs. Two of them have effects on them already. Uh, let's, let's make sure that our first name's at the top, then our title is at the next thing. Uh, the shape is above. That's looking good. Let's change our timing. So first last is going to come in at the second second. Title of position is going to come in at the fourth second. And finally, this shape, for which I can um, move right here. This, this is the uh, company logo, so to speak. We'll bring it down to about six seconds. So there we go. And finally, the, the rectangle is the full length of the title. How do we animate this? Well, let's uh, go into the library. And an uh, transitions are the best way to get things to come in and go out. First thing we want to do is maybe work with uh, first last. So let's go to the library, transitions, animations. And uh, there's a lot of animations to choose from that already come with Titler Pro. Uh, fly past, excuse me, fly in is a, is, a, is a great one. Fly past is great too. <laughs> we'll use that as, as well. Uh, and we'll use letters right. If I drag and drop that to the timeline, you'll see what's happening here. Oops, I put it on the shape. Delete transition. Let's do that again. Letters right to the word first last. So see what's happening here is as I'm dragging over this transition that's in the timeline, I can size its timing on the timeline. And I can also uh, see that each letter is running in one after the other from the right-hand side. Let's say I don't want letter by letter. Well, this fly-in transition has a lot of parameters I can choose from. One of them is apply to word by word. So now I have first and then last coming in right after it. 
I want to tighten up the timing of that, so I'm going to increase the overlap of that animation, and that looks pretty good. So I like that transition. I'm going to right-click on the timeline and choose Copy Transition. I'm going to go to the Title of Position and Paste Transition as an in. First, last, Title of Position comes in just like that. Finally, with our uh, logo, our company logo, I want that to come in, in an interesting way, too. So let's go to the Fly Past, and we can pick this dropping letters. Now, this PNG is only one image, so you won't see multiple letters, of course. But we'll drag and drop that. And now I have this nice, if you guys can see that uh, over time, falling uh, uh, company logo coming down on top of that lower third. Uh, there's one frame there. And then we'll skip a frame a little bit more. I'm looking at my uh, updater to see all you guys out there, seeing what you're seeing. And there you are. Finally, I won't go through it, but of course, we would animate it out in a similar fashion, put transitions on. But there you can see really quick, we've just come up with a very compelling uh, lower third. The last little piece of polish I want to put on this is the first last has the same styling as the tile position. Maybe I want a different kind of styling. So let's go into the Style tab. And instead of using that shadow, let's ditch that shadow. So I'm going to trash that. And I'm going to bring in an outline instead. So let's bring in an outline with a little bit of thickness. Let's say maybe two, and some extrusion. So that's kind of kind of interesting. In fact, let's uh, pick a dark color here and bring in some of that thickness. Now, it doesn't look so great right here, so let's go to our object. Remember, everything is 3D inside Title of Pro, even if you're developing a 2D look. And I'm going to simply rotate the position of that, and I'm going to zero out the uh, Y and Z. And now I've got this really nice... And yeah, let's, uh, let's make that color darker so you can really see it. There you go. Now I've got this really nice kind of 3D, 2.5D kind of, you know, 3D kind of look on the first last. So we are finished with our lower third. And um, now how do we, uh, let, let, let's stop right there and see if there's any questions at this point. Thanks, Travis. We actually do have a few questions. Um, folks want to know, is it OpenCO or OpenGO? Uh, it is uh, OpenGL is is what we're using for uh, for Tyler Pro. Great, and also um, I have some questions about uh, alignment. A lot of questions about alignment. They want to know is there grid, snap, alignment tools that you can also can you align text and objects? Uh, what we have for alignment, of course, within one paragraph, you have all the left, center, right, left and right justification within one paragraph. Also under view. Uh, you have this ability to uh, bring up a marking grid. So you have a grid that you can be working with to align text. Um, at this point, multiple paragraphs, you would um, do that by an eyeball. Uh, there's not a snapping between the multiple paragraphs, but that is on our roadmap. It's definitely something we want to get in there. Great. We also had a few questions regarding uh, text style. Can you uh, apply text style uh, to individual characters and individual pieces of text? Yes, you can. In fact, I'll, I'll demonstrate. Yes, we can do that right now. In fact, let me just mess up our lower third so you can really see that. So let's pick the first word, go to our library, go to our styles. I can even go to my styles and drag and drop this particular effect. And now I have a completely different, different look on this word versus the second word. First is looking very much different than the last. Great. <clears throat> also, uh, can you use blends or effects with this, with your titles? Yes, if you go into the library uh, under transitions, again, there's two categories that come with the package of Title or Pro. That's called animations as well as starter pack. But uh, New Blue, uh, sounds like somebody really knows uh, New, New Blue's catalog out there. Uh, New Blue has a lot of different transitions that uh, are called blends. So right here you can see I've loaded up art blends, light blends, motion blends, paint blends, uh, 3D explosions and transformations. So any of the transitions that New Blue offers can uh, be loaded into Titler Pro and be used right here on the timeline. Often in conjunction with other animations, it gives really wonderful results. Great, thank you. 
We also had uh, questions on <clears throat> when trimming. Um, when trimming, are you grabbing the edge or dragging? Also, um, when you're trimming the avid timeline, what happens to the timings of the transitions um, of the title? Uh, yes, trimming is definitely possible in the timeline. You simply get to the edge and drag it. Now, what I'm going to do, this first last, I'm going to drag it really short. And what you're going to see, the transition that's on it right now, called fly-in, right now it's two seconds. As I reduce the total duration of this paragraph, you'll notice that the fly-in transition proportionally adjusted along with the size of that paragraph. So uh, there, it's, it's a percentage of the time of that paragraph, and that's how the transitions and the effects are managed, as well as your keyframes. Great. Also, a quick question here about uh, importing Word docs for text. I, I know we're going to cover some uh, rolling credits later, but uh, if you'd like to explain about that. Yes. In fact, that, uh, that's a great thing that we'll be covering right when we get into the next section, which is doing rolling credits. So we'll address it there. But first off, any, any last questions, and then we'll definitely get to that one. Looks like that's it at the moment, but so let's just jump right into it. All right. Well, before we get into rolling credits specifically, I do want to show you how to save off uh, this particular comp composition as uh, a, a preset. Now, there's a number of layers or levels that you can do. One is that we have this first last saved uh, or, or selected, this paragraph selected, and we can go under File, Save Preset, and we can save a style preset. And that is going to save your font, your layers, your style layers, and anything that, and, and your orientation of that particular paragraph. The next level you can do is Save Paragraph Preset. So that takes the style and ups it one. It also includes your transitions and your effects that you've applied to that paragraph. And then finally, the entire composition of all the different paragraphs going on, that's simply a file, save as, and you're saving a new blue title or project off to your desktop or off, you know, off to your computer, wherever you want, and you can load that project back into any instance of Title or Pro in any project. So there's multiple levels to do that. Now, uh, when you save off these styles and um, uh, st uh, they go into certain sections called my something. <laughs> so in the library here we have styles, my styles, these are what I've made. If you go under templates, my templates, and uh, this is where you, sh you stash all the different looks that you want to do. So for example, let's, let's just close this down and say we're happy with this and that I've uh, saved it off. Let's go ahead and do something of uh, how do you get this lower third into multiple positions in your timeline. So uh, first off, we have this other point right here, or maybe Dan, and we want to have that same lower third at this position. So first off, what I'm going to do is do a little slice on the Avid timeline, and I'm going to go into my bin, and all of you Avid editors know that you can get into your effects palette and drag an effect into your bin. So I'm going to call this Tyler Pro Lower Third. And now I have that effect, Tyler Pro, in my bin. I can drag it to a new location, like over Dan. And so now we have that lower third happening on Dan. Let's open that the uh, instance of Tyler Pro. And type his name. Dan Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Now, how I type that, you notice if I keep uh, typing this, it's a center justify at the moment. So what I want to do is definitely do a left justification so that when I, uh, when I, in this template, when I do that, when I type in more characters, you'll see they're just running to the right. And that's how you would get uh, different, different, um, lower thirds into multiple positions in your, in your uh, timeline. Now this is really great when you're working with offline editors and online editors. An offline editor you know, is responsible for doing the rough cut, getting your scenes together. Um, they have the, the shot logs. They know who that person is in that scene. They need to slug in some text. But they can use Tyler Pro to slug in the text where it needs to be in the timeline. And later on, your finished editor can come along and start applying the styles they've de been developing for the show. Of course, you can work in different ways. You can farm out the styles uh, to all your different you know, uh, offline editors, and they can use them in that way as well, as we just did as a template. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways you can work collaboratively 
uh, with uh, Title or Pro, just saving off uh, projects. In fact, if you do File, Export, Package, this is going to export the image assets that were part of your design, all the styles and the paragraphs, as well as the font that you used. It's going to put it up in a zip, and so you can send it off to somebody else, and they know that they have all the elements that they need to recreate this title. All right, so let's move into uh, doing a... Well, let's pause right there. Do we have any questions at this point before we go into the rolling credit section? Yeah, we have a few questions. Uh, first off, are there keyboard shortcuts? Uh, can folks use things to make it easy to copy and paste in text? There are keyboard shortcuts, um, and uh, so it, you'll see in well, there's copy and paste. I used some of the um, right-click menus simply to see what was happening, but yeah, all your shortcuts can be used for that as well. Uh, I will throw out there, you know, as as we develop more features as well, we want to continue to mature the the variety of short uh, shortcuts that that we have. But you know, JKL is in there, and copy paste, and a number of things of that nature. I know you just mentioned it earlier with the templates, but can you just give a quick review of where your templates are stored when you do end up saving them? Um, can you import them onto another computer? Uh, yes, you can. In fact, um, I'm running a Windows machine right now, uh, but uh, in, in, in either case, they're saved in your documents. So there's a specific location where your templates are saved, so you could grab those up and ship them off to somebody else. Uh, but I would recommend, because it's convenient, using that export package feature because it grabs the font, it makes sure it has all the textures you've used for your reflective properties and all those kinds of things. So that's a great way to work. Thanks. Also, uh, can we add keyframes to our titles? Uh, yes. In fact, let's open up this one title and I'll show you quickly how to add a keyframe. And now I have an idea here. So let's uh, zoom out in our timeline a bit. Let's say we want this particular uh, shape to rotate. So we'll get onto the shape here. And under the attributes object section, you have at the bottom turn on keyframing. So we can turn on keyframing. There's already a first keyframe at the beginning of this paragraph. I can slide through to the end of the paragraph and do something like a Z rotation. And so any of the attributes that you do in the object tab will be saved into that uh, keyframe. Now you can go down to the timeline, you can drag that keyframe to a new position, you right click and delete keyframes, copy keyframes, those kinds of things. So yes, you have keyframe ability in Title or Pro. Great. Also in terms of user interface for Title or Pro, is this the same, uh, similar across all NLEs? The interface is identical across all NLEs. The only difference between the different NLEs is the, um, the couple steps to apply it to your timeline. Some NLEs uh, have it as a new item in the bin. Some NLEs have it uh, categorized under video generators versus effects. So uh, in, in the help file, there is, you know, for your NLE, how do you find Tyler Pro? Once you get it on the timeline and open it up, it's identical experience. Great, great. And lastly, uh, can you extrude a logo or image that you import? So earlier we were touching upon the PNGs and JPEGs and importing them to Tyler, but can you extrude those actual files when you, when you import them? Uh, in, in Title or One, you can, it doesn't read the outline of that alpha. So if I were to extrude this particular image, let's do that right now. And you can barely see it, basically. It's just a little bit of a shadow that I put on there. Um, so this image is a PNG. The PNG really is a rectangle, uh, so there's not a unique extrusion around this particular PNG. That said, um, you know something that we'll mention earlier, or mention later, is uh, we have another generation of Tyler Pro called Tyler Pro 2.0, and you can import EPS vector shapes inside of that. So you could get somebody's you know EPS file of their company logo, and you could extrude the details of that as well. Great. Uh, let's uh, move on to the next section, rolling credits. All right. So let's uh, open up another instance of Title of Pro in the back end of our timeline. And uh, we'll run through real quick. You've seen a lot of the elements of how to operate with the uh, different text. So we're going to 
focus on making this thing roll. So uh, first thing we want to do is get uh, a title in here. So double click. We have a paragraph now. So let's uh, back out a little bit in the timeline and see what that looks like. Let's bring it to the beginning. And let's get some text in here. Now, I might have trusted someone else to actually collect all the names that we need to work with. So I'm bringing up uh, a text document. And I'm going to copy the first couple lines. You can copy the whole thing, but I'm just going to do the first couple lines here. And go back to Titler Pro and paste all, that, all those characters. Now, interesting to note, in the text file, if you see this, there's a space between the name and, uh, and, and the position or you know, who, who the actors are. So uh, this is created by a tab. So remember that in your text file, if you put a tab in, Titler Pro is going to know to respect that as, ah, this is the trough. This is the center in which I separate my columns, and so I'll know what to do. So first thing, I'm going to bring down the point size to something smaller, just get it in the middle. And uh, we're going to go into the attribute objects area, and there's this column layout area. So I can do a justification left, or uh, I can do you know, a justification justification uh, right or do a justification left and right. I see that the uh, preview or the update here with the uh, webinar is going a little slow at this point, but I'm going to stick with center. So let's work with center. And the nice thing is with this is that trough or that center position where the two columns come together, I don't have to be sticking with the same size here. I can increase the tab width. So wherever I put a tab, that's where that, that width is being increased and really developing that up. Now, I showed you how to keyframe. You could easily keyframe the move up and down. As you know about keyframes, when you start moving things around after you've keyframed, it starts adding keyframes. And, <laughs> and, and sometimes you, you kind of lose yourself in the, in the process of keyframing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an animation instead. I'm going to go to the library. I'm going to go into Effects, Animations, and we have something called Roll and Crawl. So I'm going to grab a Roll Medium, let's say, and drag and drop that. So what that does is auto automatically puts a roll in there at a speed of what I have, 16. This is really great, especially when you're doing multi-card uh, end credits, where you want multiple paragraphs, regardless of how big they are, to move at the same speed. So no longer is the duration defining the speed, but the speed is just saying, I'm going to go to the exact same speed. So what I can do here is I can size up this paragraph so it leaves at the right time, it starts at the right time, or it starts off screen, ends off screen. I can actually go into the object panel and scoot that, uh, scoot it over a bit in X. I can rotate it in Y. I can put an effect on it, a great effect to use in the starter pack is called uh, Spotlight. And what that will allow you to do is uh, make a great uh, kind of vignette kind of look going on. Yeah, let's do this. And so what we have here, there we go. Size up the feather some. And now as, they're, as the text is coming in, you're seeing that it's simply fading in at the bottom. And at the end, it's fading in or fading out at the top. So it's really great. So now we've had that one paragraph. Let's copy that paragraph, go to another point in our timeline, and paste the paragraph. Has the roll and crawl, has the spotlight. But you know what? I want different characters in here. Let's go back to our text document, and let's grab some other characters. Copy those, go back to Titler Pro, and paste those, and let's scoot it over in X, rotate the Y, and uh, double it up on the timeline. So now, I've, look at this, I can move things in the timeline so this, they're right next to each other, and they're going up and down. So there you have a wonderful uh, rolling credit We've copy and pasted text into there. You have effects uh, already just kind of working with the fade just as you need. You, can, you know you can develop uh, any character. You have these headings that you can change what the font looks like and the size and all that kind of thing. So I hope that gives you a picture and an understanding of how to uh, develop rolling credits inside Titler Pro. 
Great. Thanks, Travis. We have a few questions after that last section. Um, some folks were wondering, uh, can you put multiple effects, uh, or apply multiple effects to your text or imported logos? And that goes for effects and transitions. Definitely. In fact, uh, if uh, we have this roll and crawl, in fact, you're already seeing it. <laughs> roll and crawl is one effect. Spotlight's another effect. So already we have two effects happening on here. So you can stack up multiple effects on any paragraph, and you can stack up multiple transitions on any paragraph. Thank you. And uh, also, folks are wondering, can, it be in, uh, can Tyler Pro be run independently of the NLE, or is it with in addition to the NLE? Because the titles are, are you know, so interesting on your media itself, uh, we have developed Titler Pro as a plugin. So it's always within the context of your NLE that it's running. Uh, we, we have had some requests of a standalone graphics generator, and we're, we're considering that. Uh, later on, I know there's a survey. If that's a thought of yours, you know, please do share. Uh, we'd like to get more feedback on that concept. Great, thanks. And. Uh, <clears throat> People want to know if, if does it have if you have access and uh, anchor control over your uh, paragraphs or text uh, in Titler Pro. Uh, is the question uh, the question is um, X Y and Z like rotation? Yeah, I believe that's what we, they were getting at is more of that kind of rotation of the of the text itself inside of Titler. Yeah, so what we have right here in this rolling credit, in fact, I have in the object tab, I've uh, changed my rotation of Y to be quite extreme. And I can change the, see, I, <laughs> if they want to do the Star Trek effect, or the Star Wars effect, excuse me, apologize for all you uh, Star Wars people out there. Uh, we can definitely do that as well. And so, yeah, each, each paragraph can have any rotation you need inside 3D space. Also, if you, uh, in reference to the lo rolling credits that we were just talking about, uh, can you add logos to those credits? Can you actually add shapes and different things while, you're, while you have those rolling credits moving? That's an excellent question, and the answer is yes. So notice how I have this different orientation. I'm getting kind of trippy on my uh, rolling credits here. But let's go uh, to the first line and put our cursor there. Now that I have my cursor in this paragraph, I can do Add Shape, Rectangle, so now I have this rectangle to work with. I'll size that up. I'll position it to the side. Maybe take the uh, radius off. Let's go to the style and bring in a texture. Let's, uh, what's a nice picture? Uh, what's a good one? We'll bring in that same logo that we used before. So there we have a logo. Oops. We'll bring in a regular picture. Let's see. Um, pictures. A bird. <laughs> and so we have a bird there inside the paragraph. And now as it's moving in space, that shape, because it's part of the paragraph, is rolling with the rest of the text. Great. <clears throat> So now we have some time um, to open up for questions uh, for Kate Ketchum and Lauren Berry, who are joining us now to answer your questions regarding Avid and the Avid Media Composer 7 uh, NLE. Um, if you'd like to take a moment here to uh, introduce yourselves, I'll just get you unmuted. Um, Kate and Lauren. Lauren, can you uh, hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes. Hi, I'm Lauren Darry. I'm the segment marketing manager for Media Composer, and my partner in crime is Kate Ketchum. Kate, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi. Um, uh, my name is Kate. I'm a product manager for the Media Composer family of products. That includes um, not only Media Composer, but Symphony and News Cutter as well. Great. Um, we have a first question here. Um, is there a time that the new patch for 7 is scheduled to come out? Uh, the 7.02 uh, is having some problems, and there's wondering if there's going to be a, a new patch to, to fix that. Um. Yeah, we're working on um, 7.03 at the moment. Um, 
We uh, certainly get a lot of bug fixes in there. Um, we're looking at probably um, either end of the month or beginning of next month. Um, we've still got a little more work to do, so it, it won't be too long. Great. Um, also, <clears throat> we have a question here. Do you see uh, where do you see Tidler Pro versus the Avid FX? Um, where, where does that work into the overall uh, uh, compilation of the different things that you uh, offer? Well, I think um, for me, really, I see, uh, you know, Titler Pro is a really uh, very powerful titling tool that that does certainly more than, than uh, just your standard title um, and can certainly be used for various effects. Um, I think Avid Effects is, gets obviously a little more complicated and is certainly very pow powerful as well. Um, but for, for me, Titler Pro is just um, a little faster, uh, a little easier to use, and particularly when um, you know you need to you just need to get the titles done and get them out there. It's it's much more intuitive, um, honestly, than than Avid Effects. So we're certainly not getting rid of Avid Effects. It, it definitely has its um, its uses and its uh, its place within the product line. But um, I think this just really complements Media Composer uh, and and Avid Effects as a whole. Um, we're really we're really happy with them. Um, with how New Blue uh, Tyler Pro is, is working with the Media Composer. Great, thanks. Um, <clears throat> Travis, we actually had a question uh, just come in uh, regarding Tyler. Um, folks were wondering, um, <clears throat> is there an auto Tyler option like there is in Marquee with Avid? Um, I'm, not, I, I'm not sure if that's just in terms of throwing in text in there or um, maybe, maybe they are, they're discussing preset styles. Um, maybe you could just touch on that in terms of what Tyler comes with uh, for the the pre styling that would that they would have or the, the availability of that uh, for in terms of effects or transitions they can apply to their text. Uh, is uh, auto titling? I, I'm, I guess is referring to templates and styles and whatnot. So let's let's go to the library here and I'll show you a couple different areas. Uh, one, we've been working with effects and you know there's a lot of effects. In fact, any particular effect has a number of presets. Uh, these aren't different effects, these are all different presets that we're working with here. Uh, also, as far as styles are concerned, um, we worked with uh, a couple of the pre-designed styles, except that I really wanted to show you doing uh, styles from scratch. That said, we, uh, New Blue has a number of style packs that uh, you can obtain that uh, augment the amount of preset styles that you have within Title or Pro. In fact, you can see one right here called Hillcrest, uh, another one called Mirlands, Midtown. Uh, so there are additional extensions you can get which are presets to get you there fast from a design perspective. Uh, as well as, uh, as far as the transitions and effects, all of them have a number of presets that you, that you start with and then modify from there. Great, thank you, Travis. <clears throat> uh, looks like we have a few questions regarding Titler uh, Pro and, Ab and, and Marquee. Um, Kate and uh, Lauren, uh, there are some people are wondering if, if there's going to be um, Tyler and Marquee and, and kind of how those work together and, and um, going forward um, with the Avid uh, Media Composer. Sure. So um, th really the same is true for, um, for Marquee as it is for Avid Effects. We're really not getting rid of Marquee at the moment. Um, I know a lot of people uh, have mixed feelings about Marquee um, and it's Intuitiveness and usefulness. I think personally, I think it's a you know it's a great tiling tool, um, but obviously it hasn't been updated in a while. So um, if you're comfortable with Marquee and 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 you like how it, you know how it works in, with the Media Composer, which and it does work well, then I would you know stick with Marquee. That's perfectly fine. Um, we just wanted to introduce something a little more up to date, um, a little more powerful, and uh, a little more intuitive with a with New Blue Tiler Pro and um, you know, certainly we thought about uh, uh, making changes in Marquee, but you know, when we talked to New Blue, they they already have this great tool. So um, at the moment, we didn't see the didn't see the um, I guess the need really to to uh, update Marquee right now. So, but again, we're not getting rid of it. It's certainly going to stick around for a bit, um, and uh, you can certainly use both in the same timeline. Quite honestly. Uh, I haven't been using them together in the timeline, so I couldn't compare one to the other in a single timeline, but they certainly will work just fine. Great. 
Thanks. We had another question uh, regarding MC7. They were saying some people were saying that the uh, there's a basic level of effects that come with MC7, and they're wondering um, what are the additional packs and, and how can they be purchased. I'm I'm assuming you're referring to the the new blue uh, effects packs that come with um with oh, Media Closer Seven. Yep, I, I apologize. That's on our end. So Travis, uh, we have some people know. wondering where they can get the additional effects. Um, maybe templates and styles, uh, effects and transitions to, uh, to, 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 to put with their Tyler Pro. Uh, well, uh, in the library itself, as a convenient place, uh, there's these links called to get more. And that'll essentially take you directly to our webpage. But at newbluefx.com, uh, we have a whole titling section where you can find Tyler Pro 1, Tyler Pro 2, and its additional features, as well as all these style packs are available. So newbluefx.com is the place to get it. Thanks, Travis. Um, we have a question regarding uh, Avid. Uh, we're wondering, um, does Avid support .avi files um, with alphas? Ooh, that's an excellent question. Um, I would have to get back to you on that one, actually. I can't recall. Uh, Adam, I don't know if there's a way that you can get uh, maybe the user's contact information so that I can contact them offline and, and get them that answer. Certainly. I, I have the information right here, so I can get that to you after. Great. And Travis, we have a couple questions uh, regarding Tyler Pro 2.0. Uh, can you give us some information on some of the differences and, and, and uh, where they can, what they can expect with Tyler Pro 2.0 um, pricing and, and availability? That's a great question. In fact, uh, I have a final slide to share with you all. And uh, this is our resources that you can use uh, to get more information about Tyler Pro 1, Tyler Pro within Avid Media Composer, uh, and also uh, Tyler Pro 2. So uh, let's just go through some of the resources here. We have newbluefx.com, which we mentioned earlier. That's our, our main website. We can get wonderful tutorials on how to operate it, refresh, uh, learn things quickly. Uh, you know, like uh, like we're all saying, it's, it's very accessible, but sometimes the tutorial gets you there even faster. It gives you great ideas. We also have support.newblueeffects.com. This is our support community, so you can get help from other users from there as well. Uh, a great place to go is newblueeffects.com slash avid-titler-pro. This is a great page, especially for Avid users, to understand what Titler can do for them in their context. Um, and lastly, apps.avid.com slash media composer trial uh, is, uh, for those of you who haven't made the jump yet, uh, this is a great place uh, to learn more about what Avid Media Composer 7 can do for you. And you know, all this context, this whole package. Uh, on the uh, lower right here, you see some of the advantages of using Titler Pro 2.0. Uh, you know, the title that we showed you today, you saw its power, you saw its breadth, uh, some additional things that we've included for more advanced uh, titling solutions is um, customized lights and key framing lights with multiple lights, uh, bevels that you can design yourself or use some of the presets, um, uh, bringing in video textures so you wouldn't uh, have to have video assets on your NLE time separate away but you can actually incorporate them as objects within your composition or within, um, within the different layers of your styles. Lens control it, is simply just having the lens that's more extreme or less extreme for different styles. And EPS vector import, which we mentioned earlier. You can bring in uh, EPS vector imported uh, files and, and really get the unique shapes of what a vector can provide and get those extruded. So those are some of the benefits of uh, Tyler Pro 2.0, as well as some of the resources that you all have to uh, access to get any information that you want. Thanks, Travis. Uh, with that said, I think we're coming up to our close of our, our of our presentation here. I uh, just want to take a moment to thank everyone thank everyone for joining us today, um, as well as Lauren and Kate from Avid for answering the questions at the end here. Um, we hope you found it helpful. We hope you found it valuable and, and learned a lot more about Tyler Pro 1.0 and Avid Media Composer 7. Um, before you go, at the very end, we'll, we'll we'll close down this meeting and we'll have a survey. If you take a moment to fill out that survey, it'd be very helpful for us to learning kind of what how this benefited you and what we could do better going forward. So um, thanks again and uh, have a great day and um, happy editing.